To make switching the elevator easier, SAS decided to change locomotives. Operating former Norfolk Southern High Hood number 5093 on the south end. So Austin, we are in the cab of 5093, which is a former Southern High Hood locomotive. I need your opinion from the man himself. What's it like running the High Hood? Are you a fan or do you passionately hate it like everybody else? I have no problem with it. I mean, going around curves when you're long hood forward, you know, get up, check the other side, make sure you're all clear. But other than that, there, it's not just a GP38-2 anymore. You know, it's got some uniqueness to it. The the bell and the long hood, the two horns, the high nose, the walkway lights, all the all the classic Southern features that make it stand out more than just a run of the mill GP38-2. So, yeah, little little uniqueness. As with all of the chickens' high hoods. 5093 is set up to operate long hood forward. The visibility from a high hood is similar to that of a steam locomotive. It's as if the boiler is right out in front of the crew. With a diesel locomotive, however, instead of a boiler, it's a prime mover out in front of the cab. That looks better than the power did. Oh, we're gonna leave here. Oh, stop. Are we spotting these cars here? Is that what we're doing right now? We're gonna go down to the south end of the siding and take a couple cars off so we'll be clear. And then we'll be going back in the plant, getting uh, two cuts of cars out of the way so we can spot some fertilizer loads. And uh, beyond that, we have this conductor. That's as far as the plan is right now. If you've ever wondered what was inside of a high hood, a toilet and a fold-down sink occupy the cab of the 5093. According to rail historian Ron Flannery, it's a common misconception that both Norfolk and Western and Southern Railway continued to order their hood units set up to operate long hood forward for better crew safety in the event of a head-on collision. Although that might have been a secondary benefit, the real reason was bi-directional capability. Specifically when you're light engine, you can really feel the difference in the braking effort of these units. When you take off, this one pushes or pull that one, and when you stop, that one pulls this one back. The Southern's approach to bi-directional operation was to make the short end of the locomotive the rear while having the engineer on the right-hand side with the long hood leading. In the event that the unit was running in reverse, the engineer would be on the left-hand side, but with a short hood, so his forward vision to the right side of the track wasn't impaired all that much. This saved precious hours of service from locomotives being wide to face short hood forward. While new power in this configuration didn't arrive until the SD45s, Earlier units like SD24s, GP30s, and GP35s all came with high short hoods, but were set up with the short hood end as the front. Once Co-Alliance had been switched, SAS took four empty two-bay hoppers to 14 track between Hannah and Thomaston, where another train was waiting for him to pull north. The empty cars were transported to Lacrosse the following week and were loaded with fly ash.
Hanna, Indiana is where the chicken crosses the former Pennsylvania Railroad main line. Now owned by CSX, dispatched by Norfolk Southern, and leased by Genesee and Wyoming's Chicago, Fort Wayne, and Eastern, the once prosperous main is now but a secondary overflow route. As the train continues south, note the sunshine was finally peeking through the clouds. As the old saying goes, if you don't like the weather in the Midwest, wait 15 minutes. At the north end of 14 track, SAS eased the short consist to a stop, meeting SDM number 814 and High Hood GP38-2 number 5152 which were on the point of another outbound mosaic potash train. 